uh, a purpose. You know, saving the babes of the earth from aliens. That's cool. Since Duke Nukem 3D, you've worked on uh, pretty much all of the games of that franchise. Now, the big future release, Duke Nukem Forever, is still in production since its announcement in 1997. I guess, do you know the current status of the game and whether it'll be released this year? I mean, have you done all the voice acting for it? I've done none of the voice acting for it, only the trailer that you may have heard, which said something to the effect of, I'm looking for an alien toilet to park my bricks, or something like that. Um, no. In fact, I did speak with George Broussard, the president of 3D Realms, kind of Duke's daddy, uh, last year. And I said, George, what do I tell people when they ask when forever is coming out? And he said, hey, tell them it'll be done when it's done. And that's all there is to it. I guess well, if, if you were to guess, what do you think uh, has, has delayed the game for so long? I think the ever-changing technology. Um, George wanted to make the game as good as it could be. And, and the problem is, I mean, look at today's technology. Uh, for instance, you buy a laptop computer today, by next month it's outdated. Well, it's the same with the technology behind creating these video games with incredible graphics and interactivity. As soon as you develop the game, it's practically outdated by you know, technology standards. Now, along with Duke Nukem, you've also worked on many other franchises, including Sonic and Half-Life. Now, uh, what's your favorite project to work on besides Duke Nukem? My all-time favorite game was one called Twisted Metal 4, where I was the uh, maniacal spokesperson. I introduced the game and gave the story behind it. And I put so much into the recording of that session that I raised my body temperature. I think my core temperature came up a few degrees. I was sweating bullets all red in the face, totally out of breath, and lost my voice for a day after that recording. But when you listen to it, it's so passionate, yet scary, creepy, and funny at the same time. I think I really nailed it. Uh, I think that was my my all-time favorite project, just doing that character. Being a very diverse voice actor, I know that you do many impressions of celebrities. You were saying earlier about those uh, Duke Nukem outtakes. Is there any technique or trick to try and master the voice of a celebrity? And which person or character do you think you've nailed down the most? Wow. I, I don't think I absolutely nail the voice of Don Pardo, who's a famous American announcer from the uh, NBC in New York and the uh, Saturday Night Live program. But everyone seems to think that I'm the closest sounding sound alike to Don Pardo ever. And he's the guy who goes, it's Saturday Night Live. I, I think that's close, but if for some reason, nobody else does the Don Pardo voice. So uh, I, I get a lot of work doing that. <laughs> that and uh, uh, imitating the late uh, and great Don LaFontaine, who was the big movie trailer guy. Uh, I'm getting uh, more work these days impersonating him. Can I hear a sample? Oh, you know, he's the guy who goes, In a world where one man, one world, one job. You know, everything's one line (laughs) copy for this guy. Nice. Now, uh, I I guess you're also in a band, Uncle Boogie, and uh, uh, (laughs) you run your your own production company, John St. John Productions. Can you talk a bit about both of them? Sure. Uh, Let's talk about Uncle Boogie. That's the love of my life. My real passion is in singing and performing in front of audiences. And I'm in a seven-piece band. We're a cover band called Uncle Boogie. We play everything from 70s disco to blues rock up to today's current songs, as long as each and every song is danceable. Because what people love about my band is that, you know, we keep you dancing all night long. And uh, there's nothing like uh, the thrill of playing in front of a big crowd and getting a a big round of applause and people just enjoying uh, your talent live. You know, when you're in a recording studio all day, you don't interact with anybody except, well, as I am with you right now in the studio, one-on-one or, you know, over the telephone. And uh, you don't get instant reaction to your work. Actually, you usually don't get reaction at all. Uh, but when you play or perform in front of a crowd in a band, it's it's right there. People are cheering, whistling, clapping, you know, screaming, more, more. That's a thrill. 
Um, aside from that, let's say, oh, my production company, what I do is uh, my partner Jodina and I are uh, tandem voiceovers. She's a great female voiceover artist. And the two of us together, we image radio and TV stations. That means we are the voice of the radio station or TV station. And um, uh, we make commercials for both TV and radio, uh, provide the voiceover. We do a lot of multi-track production. Uh, bands will often come to me to have me produce their uh, demo CDs. And uh, that's that's the kind of work I do. It's audio engineering and voiceover for the most part. I wanted to go back to uh, what we were talking about earlier with uh, Duke Nukem, the kind of controversy that came out at the time. Did you have any hate mail? And if you did, what's your best hate mail? I never did. No, nobody ever has told me in all these years. I must be quite disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The only disgruntled person I've ever heard was on that ventrilo harassment. Are you familiar with that? Yes, that, that was about to be my next question. <laughs> <laughs> I only wish that I really had had something to do with that. Uh, hearing that lady go off on Duke was pretty darn funny. How did you find it? Uh, you know, a fan emailed me one day and said, by the way, have you heard this yet? Click this link. And, and, and I laughed at until I cried when I heard that. Uh, you know, I think I could do a pretty good Duke Nukem impression. Do you? Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Okay, it's time to kick ass and chew blah blah. It's pretty bad, but I still. <laughs> oh, that, that was not bad at all. Try try this one. Go, come get some. Come get some. <laughs> Dang, that's pretty good. You know what? Uh, they may replace me. It could be you. Oh, no, no. There's only one original. There's only one original. Come on. <laughs> it could happen. <laughs> Now, my final question is, what's next for John St. John? What are you doing right now? You know what? I'm really excited right now about a project I've been doing. There's a there's a website here called Karaoke for Cash, and it features people singing karaoke on their webcams, and uh, they're submitted to this website for prizes. Well, I, and I, I signed up. I put up a webcam. I sang a few songs, and just last week, I won the weekly competition for, you know, a $250 prize, which was pretty nice. And this coming Saturday night, I'm actually on television here in uh, Southern California uh, on Channel 6, and uh, Karaoke for Cash now has a broadcast television show, and I'm one of the contestants for that. If I should win it, it's a $10,000 prize, so I'm really excited because I actually have a shot at it. Hey, 10 grand. You don't need Duke Nukem. You just be kind of swimming in money. Dude, I'll always need Duke Nukem. I'm not giving that up. You ever do it in real life? Just kind of phoning up, kind of ordering out to something? Hey, this is Duke. You know what? I do it for friends all the time. And even my son, I have a 15-year-old son. And he'll every once in a while call me from high school and go, Hey, Dad, this guy doesn't believe you're Duke. Tell him. And he'll put his friend on the phone and go, You better believe my son or I'll rip your head off and shit down your neck. And, of course, then they laugh and go, wow, your dad is Duke! <laughs> I get a kick out of that. You said earlier that you helped with some of the phrases. What were some of the phrases that you coined? Uh, you know, I can't take credit for actually coining any of the phrases, but for changing those phrases to, to a way that Duke would say it, or, you know, maybe changing one word or, or what have you. That was really my contribution. I didn't write. I didn't write it. I would say because that for the first line he says where he goes, um, so what's that Roddy Piper line? It's from They Live. Uh, I'm here to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of gum. See, I thought that was from Duke Nukem, and it was from They Live. Yeah, yeah. And then also, uh, I'll rip your head off and shit down your neck. I think Bruce Campbell used that originally. <laughs> uh, listen, John, I'd like to thank you very much for doing this interview with me. It was a pleasure. Nick, it's been my pleasure any time, my friend. Hi, this is John St. John, otherwise known as Duke, and you're listening to the Rafferty Mills Connection Podcast. Keep listening, or I'll rip your head off and shit down your neck. Let's rock.